Hi guys, welcome to UI Path Interview Questions Part 4. Today we will take a look at some of the very important interview questions on RE framework. So let's get started and the first question in our list is in a RE framework process what workflows are executed only during the first run of the initialization state. So yes, there are some workflows which are executed only during the first run of the initialization state and the first workflow in this list is init all settings workflow. This workflow is used to read settings and constants from the configuration file and add them to the config dictionary variable. This workflow is also used to get the values of assets from the orchestrator listed in the asset sheet of the configuration file. And the next workflow in this list is kill all processes workflow which is used to kill all window processes representing applications used in the business process to assure that the execution starts in a clean state. Now apart from these two workflows you can add other workflows as well in the first run of the initialization state which are created as per the project requirement. For example, you can add the workflow in the first run of the initialization state to read input data from Excel file to a data table. So let's say that your project has the input data in the form of Excel file which you want to store in a data table for further use in the project. So this you can create as a workflow and add in the first run block of the initialization state. So now let me show you the first run block or the first run sequence in the initialization state of RE framework. So this is the project which we created in the RE framework session where we have taken the input data in an Excel file and stored it in data table for processing in the project. Now if I move to this initialization state, if I open this one, here you see we have a if activity here where we have defined a condition config is nothing that this config is a global variable let me show you this config is a dictionary variable where the key is string and the value is object so in this initialization state in this initialization state we have added this if activity with the condition config is nothing and if this condition satisfies we have this first run sequence let me collapse this one so if this condition is satisfied then this first run sequence will be executed so in this first run sequence all these workflows which we discussed just now are listed that is init all settings workflow kill all processes workflow these two workflows are available by default in a RE framework project and you can add as many workflows here as per your pro project requirement as in our case we have created this workflow write input data to data table we created this workflow to read the data from this file to read the data from this excel file and store it in data table so this one we created by ourselves you can add as many workflows here as per the project requirement which are required to run only during the first run of the initialization state now moving to our questions now after this question you might get a follow-up question how is the first run of the initialization state determined so we discussed just now this is determined with the if condition that is config is nothing and what is config so config is a global variable in RE framework project of type dictionary with the key as string and value as object now let's move to the next question what is the difference between init all settings and init all applications workflow so if i talk about the differences between init all settings and init all applications workflow init all settings workflow is used to read settings and constants from the configuration file and add them to the config dictionary variable it is also used to get the value of assets from orchestrator listed in the asset sheet of the configuration file Whereas the init all applications workflow is used to open applications used in the process and do necessary initialization procedures. 
Also, this init all settings workflow is executed in the first run sequence of the initialization, initialization state, which we discussed just now. And this init all applications workflow is executed outside the first run sequence of the initialization state. So if you move to the initialization state again, you will find that this init all settings workflow is available under the first run sequence, whereas this init all applications workflow is available outside the first run sequence so these are the differences between these two workflows we'll move to the next question now what type of exceptions can be captured in the initialization block so the system exceptions can be captured in the initialization block next question what are the two possible transitions from initialization state so there are two possible transitions from the initialization state. First one is successful transition and it occurs when the condition satisfies that is system exception is nothing. And if this condition satisfies the flow moves to the get transaction data state. And the next possible transition is system exception transition which occurs when the condition satisfies system exception is not nothing that means a system exception occurred and in this case the flow moves to the end process state so let me show you these two transitions in the reframework project so from this initialization if i move back to main here you see this is the initialization state where we have two possible transitions first one is successful and second is system exception so in case of successful the flow will move to get transaction data state and in case of system exception transition the flow will move to end process state so if you are not aware of the state machines and re framework concept in ui path you would find it difficult to understand these interview questions so in such case i would suggest you to go please go through my previous videos for a quick reference you can check out my videos on reframework that is ui part tutorial 19 and the ui part tutorial 25 this one is the introduction video this 19th is the introduction video on re framework and this one is the real time project which we have created with the excel data also, you must know the state machine concept in UI path. For that, you can check out my previous video on what is state machine, that is UI path tutorial 7. So, please check out the videos 7, 19, and 25 so that you understand the questions better. Now, let's move to the next question. And the next question we have is in what situation? kill all processes workflow is executed in the in process state so kill all processes workflow is not executed every time in the in process state let me show you when this kill all processes workflow will be executed so if the application fails to close gracefully under close all applications workflow this close all applications workflow is invoked under the try block of in process state so in such case, if the application fails to close gracefully under close all applications workflow, in such case, the kill all processes workflow is executed under the catches block. And it uses kill process activity to force the termination of applications used in the business process being automated. So if I show you this end process state, so this is the in process state let me open this one and in this in process state here we have this try catches and finally block so under this try block here is the close all applications workflow which is used to close the applications gracefully but in case error occurs in case exception occurs in this workflow the exception will be cached under this catches block and a message will be logged and accordingly after that the kill all processes workflow will be executed so this kill all processes workflow will be executed only when the applications are not able to close gracefully under the close all applications workflow this workflow this kill all processes workflow will not be executed every time now let's move to the next question and the next question is explain transaction number variable. 
So this transaction number variable holds the current transaction number. Incrementing this variable makes the framework retrieve the next transaction. And if the framework is retrying a failed transaction, this variable is not incremented until the maximum number of retry attempts are reached. I'll show you this transaction number variable in our project. Before that, let's see the next question. Explain transaction item variable. So this transaction item variable holds the data to be processed. This transaction item variable is a queue item variable by default, but its type can be changed to match the transaction type in the process. For example, when processing data from an Excel that is read into data table, the type can be changed to data row. So in our case, as we used the Excel, the input data we have in our Excel file, which we read into the data table. So in our case also, the type of the transaction item can be changed to data row type instead of queue item type. Let me show you these two variables in the RE framework project. So in our project, the two variables will be available. So if I move to variables here, so here you see this transaction item variable is available of type data row. So this one, the variable type we changed to data row from Q item in our session as we used this Excel file uh, for the input data. We read the data from this input file from this Excel file and stored it in data table variable. So we changed the variable type to data row. By default, the transaction item variable, you will see the variable type as Q item. Next, we also have this transaction number variable of type in 32. And by default, its value is zero. Now let's move back to the questions. And the next question is, how will RE framework process behave if stop is triggered in orchestrator? So it could be possible that you are running your reframework process from the orchestrator and in the orchestrator there is option to stop the process. So how this process will behave if we trigger the stop from the orchestrator. So we know that get transaction data state starts with should stop activity which checks if the stop is triggered in orchestrator or not. And in this activity, that is in should stop activity, if stop is triggered in orchestrator, true is assigned to the should stop boolean variable. And if should stop value is true, the message will be logged and transaction item variable will be assigned nothing. Now with no data, that is transaction item variable is nothing. So since transaction item variable is nothing, we don't have any data. The flow will move to in process state to end the process. So in this way, if we trigger stop in the orchestrator by following this process, the flow will move to the in process state to end the process. Let me show you this flow in the RE framework project. Now here if I move to this get transaction data state, as I mentioned this get transaction data state starts with this should stop activity where it is named as check stop signal where we have a variable should stop. So if we trigger stop in the orchestrator, the value true will be assigned to this should stop boolean variable. So if this condition is true, that is if the value of should stop is true, that is we have stopped, we have triggered stop in the orchestrator. If this is true, then a message will be logged that is stop process requested and transaction item will be assigned nothing. Now since this transaction item is assigned nothing, if we look at the transition here, that is no data transition. So if I open this transition, if I scroll a bit down, this no data transition has the condition transaction item is nothing, which is satisfied in this case. And if this condition is true, the flow will move to the in process state. So the flow will move to this end process state to end the process. So in this way, the process will be ended if we trigger the stop from the orchestrator. 
but what if the value of should stop variable is not true let me show you the alternate flow which will be executed if the value of should stop variable is not true so in this case this else block will be executed where this get transaction data workflow will be executed let me open this workflow that is get transaction data this get transaction data workflow is used to get a transaction item from a specified source such as queues, spreadsheets, which is in our case, we have stored our input data in a spreadsheet, database, mailbox, web APIs. So we will get the transaction item from this get transaction data workflow. Now in this workflow, first of all, it checks for the condition that is transaction item is less than the total number of records to be processed. So in our case, how will we calculate the total number of records? So we have stored this complete data from this Excel file to a data table and we named it at transaction data variable. This transaction data is a variable of type data table and the expression transaction data dot rows dot count provide us the total number of records to get processed. So first of all, this workflow is going to check if the transaction number is less than the total number of records to be processed. And if this condition is true, it will fetch the transaction item from the data table one by one. And if this condition is false, if this condition is false, the flow will move to the else block and the transaction item variable will be assigned nothing. So this is how this get transaction data workflow works. So this answers our next question, which is. So we already saw and understood the answer to this question. Moving to the next question, how get transaction data workflow fetches transaction data to be processed. So we learned about this one as well. This get transaction data workflow is used to get a transaction item from a specified source such as queues, spreadsheets, database, mailbox or web APIs. It will first check the condition that is get transaction data workflow will first check the condition value of transaction item variable is less than the total number of records to be processed. And if this condition is true, data to be processed is assigned to the transaction item variable. And if the condition is false, the transaction item variable is assigned nothing. So in this way, this get transaction data workflow works. So that's all for this session, guys. There are some other important questions on RE framework, which we will discuss in our next session. And I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, give it a like and share with your friends. Hit the bell button to get the updates on the latest videos. And if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to our channel as well. And I'll see you soon in the next one. Bye-bye.